Okay. Okay. Ah, the schedule says 10. Okay, not 9. Uh, but I think I was looking at the schedule. Big challenge Monday. Yeah, you're at uh, 10 a.m., 11 a.m., but that's set in German time. That's uh, that's in German time? No, it's not even. It's, yeah, okay. It's even UTC. Yeah, that's true. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Samuel, for the information. I think you're right. Just I'm communicating. Uh, so yeah, we should we inform the others that it's now, yeah. or should we wait for that? No, because at, at, I think I think at ten we have another call, so we can only do it now, unfortunately. Uh, so usually it's uh, at nine, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yes, it's usually at nine. So yeah, maybe Anastasia, if you could let other people in Slack, that would be great. Okay. But who had the chance to go through the challenge document? Anyone? Okay, who didn't have a chance to, to go through it? Okay, Jeremy and Binyam, Brooke, okay. So I assume the ones that are raising the hand didn't have a chance to look into it but binyam could you could you just see your understanding you know what have you understood what was clear what was not clear i know that you may not have looked in detail so it's okay just tell us what yeah, are you can you yeah yeah uh I actually looked at uh, the part where uh, uh, we are assigned to a new group uh, and uh, some of the new uh, tools we'll be using throughout this week, like Kafka, <coughs> Airflow, and so on. Uh, I've never been able to uh, work with those kind of tools before, uh, so I was just looking into them. Other than that, I, I didn't look into the details of the uh, <coughs> project. Anyone else who looked into it? So just for those of you who, who are just joining, I'm asking who has looked at the document, at like the challenge document, and you know, if you could tell us what you understood, you did, yeah? Okay, hello everyone, Hi. nice to have you back. Uh, yes. So just to give an introduction, based on, from my own understanding, uh, we'll be building a, a data collection for speech text uh, applications that we've been working before. So. Uh, what we'll be doing is from the user side, the user will be able to see some text and he will be able to record the uh, the, uh, yeah, yeah. the voice or, or not the voice, but he'll be able to uh, capture his own audio of that text and he will be sending that for our data. But in the, for the pipeline, we'll be using Kafka as a streaming platform and the Kafka will ingest the data that the user provided and there will be some kind of transformation 
and the transformation I think will uh, be primarily done using Spark. And after the transformation, the data will be stored into a data lake, which in our case will be a three packet of AWS. Awesome. I think that's great. I think very good understanding of the things that the DDS aid and what is described in the challenge document. Who is, you know, feel free to say like what part you've grasped and what part you haven't grasped. If there is anyone, you know, a lot of the things are new. So, you know, as I last time said, if it's new for you, it's okay. Like it's new. Like we expect that it's new for most people. And, but but then some things you may not understand. You can ask like, okay, what is Kafka about? You know, what is Spark doing here? And you know, what is Airflow? So which part of the terminology, the jargons, you understood and which parts you don't? Samuel. Okay, hello everyone. Good morning, Abdul. Uh, my question was like, what's the difference between the three platform like Kafka, Spark, and Airflow, and if there's any similarity between them, the main purpose of those three yeah, platforms? Okay. Very good question. Um, who wants to attempt to answer it? Maybe I can go. Yeah, go on, I know. Okay, uh, so Kafka is, uh, from my understanding, it's just uh, a way to handle uh, streams of uh, data or processes uh, in a distributed way. And we'll be using Airflow to handle the transformation of the data. And I'm not really sure about Spark, but just to go over, uh, just to go over what we'll, we'll be doing in this project as you did as it. Uh, some data would be uh, shown to the user on the front end side that's going to be text and uh, transcription that's going to come from the user would be uh, sent back to our backend through uh, Kafka and that will be stored in a data lake meaning uh, like uh, you know, both the text and the audio would be stored in the same uh, S3 bucket. I think that's why it's called the data leak because it contains different kinds of uh, data formats. And then we will use um, Airflow to handle the transformation of that data uh, in a way to make it uh, easily easily available for uh, for uh, specific tasks for the modeling tasks. And yeah, that's what I understood. Ah, I was mute. Sorry. Like, uh, um, partly right, partly not right. So who can improve it? Yedidia? Okay, just to add up something on Hanok. Uh, Spark will be primarily used from kind, for some kind of transformation. It's somehow similar to Pandas, but not exactly. Uh, it will be used uh, main, it will be mainly used uh, to transform data in real time. It will ingest some kind of data in real time from producer in our case, Kafka. The Kafka will be used to uh, transfer data in real time, which is also for Torrent. And Airflow will be used, I think, to schedule tasks, maybe uh, to send the data, or in our case, to store the data in our data leak on a specified schedule basis. Better, yeah. I think that's, you know, the combination in particular, the order, which is Kafka is basically your message passing interface. You know, it's basically, um, if you think of, there are a, a number of things that you do in life can be decomposed into two. Uh, it's called publisher and subscriber, right? So, and in that, it means you need to store some things in a queue whenever, um, whenever, especially whenever you are looking into highly distributed systems. So that means you need a very reliable uh, relay that basically someone you're sending it and then communication happens there and something comes there but if you are probably unable to fetch in the middle it should be stored still and then but if you have subscribed and therefore you can actually then um, get it back later so it's lossless so that means you don't lose you know just because you, you didn't consume it or you didn't read it on time you know you don't you don't lose it so kafka's real main part is this call it a relay a switch you know whenever you think of a switch in this sense 
and whether you know you have the basically the producers and the consumers and producers produce that basically you one of your producer is your web page right like the, the page that you are showing to a user um, and then that pro, you know that basically produces some in, some input and then puts it into Kafka and then there are consumers from this and each of these producers would produce of course under a topic let's say okay that topic could be a particular um, let's say in this case you want to label some text and that text itself can be a topic right so just that the one that you are and then anyone that is kind of like subscribing you know a front end and the front end there are probably 12 let's imagine you are really successful and there are about a million people trying to help you like kind of uh, transcribe right in that case for one single topic there may be an and in this case, let's say thousands of people trying to read it. And in that sense, you will be able to still manage it because, you know, under that topic, uh, conversations happen. And then the consumers, on the other hand, would consume and do. And that consumers could be scheduled through Airflow, right? Uh, how often they are reading. They could be like when event driven. In that case, as soon as like um, Kafka says like, oh, event is there, you know, then you can actually read it. And then in between, of course, is the transformation. And that transformation could be, you know, in, in week six, you build, is that in six? No, in week four, you build um, like a model. And that model already, you can use it as a way of like, you know, what if somebody just really is fooling you? You know, it's really, you, you show them a text that says like, you know, this is a dog, but the person says like, you know, what the, who the hell are you? And how do you know that it is actually reasonable? So there are noise. Um, people probably an audio doesn't work. Maybe there is so much silent in between. So you might need to do some kind of, you know, sanity checks into your actually that. In that sense, you will be able to do that live as soon as you know, just before you're kind of uh, putting it off into into a data lake or into a, um, a storage. You are basically doing that, and so that sanity check itself is really a, a huge work. Um, and, and, you know, Spark is basically a distributed uh, computing. I think as, you know, you can consider it Spark DF is just basically uh, the normal data frame uh, Pandas DF, except that it is a distributed. So that means you don't need to, you know, Pandas is a, in one machine. This one, you can run it in, in, in multiple distributed system. It can be thousands of nodes you can run them on that, right? So, so the the three elements are like that. So again, now you know we we are informally introducing it. I still think some people you may have some questions and some of the things, the basic ones, including you may not understand. Your time now to ask which part of it you understood, which part of it's getting clearer, which part of it is still kind of jargon that you need some uh, light on. So is everything clear now, like what you are going to do? Uh, OK, thank you. Just one question. Uh, so uh, we are going to use uh, Apache Airflow for some kind of scheduling. But uh, are we going to use Kafka for the real-time streaming purpose or for the full tolerant purpose? Because no. We, so okay. The purpose is very different because it's not you. You don't. You, it's not only streaming. You need. You need mm -hmm. a reliable queue system. Message, basically, some someone. You know, like imagine the imbalance between a, a consumer. So let's imagine you have a million people that are visiting your site. Okay. Okay. And then you have, let's say, one machine in the background, or maybe two that are processing. Now there's imbalance, right? So basically in a second, let's imagine you are receiving something like a thousand messages, but you are able in a second, let's say you want, you can only process um, 10. So when that happens, you need in the middle, some, some form of like queue system. And, and that, that part of like this queue system where it's holding for you without loss. And even if some, you know, some things are kind of like 
because it's a distributed system itself. Even if something doesn't work, it is you know uh, reliable. It is distributed, so you basically and it handles different imbalance between how people are consuming and and, and or how systems are consuming and the systems that are consuming and the systems that are, the systems that are uh, producing. So when if there are mismatches, you don't care, right? So the consumers consume in their rate, the producers produce in their rate, and Kafka is basically used in every basically you know Facebook for example you know the say it's many of many of the really really big systems in the world that use Kafka and in the past we have you know working on Kafka means you really are working on enterprise scale because Kafka can process one million messages per second and that really means like for you know basically it can handle a Google type or a Google class um, system. So it's it's that kind of, there are a number of message passing interface that, that basically um, this subscriber publisher mode and every big, you know, um, AWS has its own. AWS also has a managed Kafka, so called MKS. Um, so it's, Google has its own. And there are many, but Kafka is basically just the enterprise Apache Kafka, which is uh, a free open source, but but basically used as a core backbone for for many many big organizations. So does that make sense? I mean, I yeah 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 yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, just one more question. I haven't gone through the entire description so on the challenge document. Uh, so it's not uh, very clear regarding the speech collection. Are we going to send the audio file to the Kafka or are we going to send some kind of metadata or the URL of that audio data after being uploaded to some uh, cloud platform, distributed cloud platform? Yeah. So it both, right? So what does your front end does? It fetches from somewhere the audio and it allows people to play it and then it receives some transcription, let's imagine some, some feedback. Uh, on that, and then it sends it back. Now you can do all in through Kafka system, right? So basically, like it can become in the first instance of consuming the audio or bringing the audio, it can act as um, in one topic as a consumer, and basically another thing in the background produces it and and publishes it. Right, and then your front end first becomes a consumer. In this case, it consumes or it brings um, only audio files to you know together with some metadata. Let's imagine, and then in another instance, it is basically a producer. So that means it sends back to with a topic. In this case, probably the same as um, some some key identifier. Why a key identifier? Because you want to relate what was consumed what was returned, right? So the, you, you, need, you need to be able to relate whenever you are actually uh, saving it, you want to know for which, you know, of course it can send back both audio and, and text, the transcription, and then you can attach it there. So in that case, you know, um, it's as, uh, asynchronous, that means you don't need to wait, you don't need to synchronize in the background, but so your front end can be that. And your scheduler basically schedules what in the background publishes as well as also consumes. So the consumer in the background is, um, you know, your, let's say your, again, you can connect Spark has also a streaming capability and you can actually connect Spark to be on the streaming mode with Kafka. So it basically subscribes to it and then it, it streams. But in terms of, for example, your model quality checks, whatever on existing data, you can schedule it with, um, with Airflow. So Airflow really is basically just a scheduler. It's like a cron, um, but much more, you know, again, it's Apache. Um, Airflow is, again, a really big, big um, in that sense. That means it's enterprise ready, enterprise grade uh, system. So you can schedule everything, anything, and, and the very, it has many forms. You can schedule it using bash scripts, you can schedule it using Python, you can schedule it using many, many other operators. So, yeah, does that, does that make sense? Yeah, yes. Uh, just one last question. Yeah. Uh, 
So what exactly is being stored under the Vitalik? Uh, are we good, just going to store the text in the speech form of that specific text on the data lake? In, it, it's up to you, what? right? It's up to you. So let's imagine you want to you wanna basically only save the metadata plus the solution, let's say, but in this case, or uh, what's the response from a user, right? Mm -hmm. That metadata can store, of course, the, the file name or identifier of the audio, which means later you will basically have to um, match, or you can store together with the metadata, the audio, which was the person read, um, or the person heard, and then the response they gave, um, basically. So, you know, in this case, it's, it's sorry, like, so, in this case, what you are, what you are doing is that you actually are receiving um, a text that's easier because there's so much text and the person is reading that text. So at first you are receiving from the front end the text, the person reads it and returns an audio. So you can store the text, probably that makes sense, the text plus the audio plus some metadata. That metadata contains the quality that was uh, automatically measured and many others, the time, the location of the person, you know, many other metadata that's, that's sent back. So that metadata basically it can be a unit of like a metadata plus the source, the text that was sent, and and also the audio that was returned. Okay, okay. Yeah. So there is going to be uh, some kind of uh, an event a trigger on the front end to the Kafka broker. Yeah. So I mean, that's what one of the point is to really connect that. It's basically, you know, it's like you're basically subscribing. So whenever someone comes, you just bring some from from a topic. And then in that topic, the you know, basically some others in the background are publishing. So from some file system, you're basically putting it, right? And then the only thing you have to ensure is that the your uniqueness. Of course, you want to cover as many texts as possible, as much diverse as possible. But, but you will put it in a queue and then you basically, um, yeah. So you, your part is really to, to be able to just say, you can publish everything, right? The whole text that you have can be published and then your front end is basically reading. But then ha the communication between the front end and Kafka can be also brokered by some other intermediate that actually relies on, for example, many other, including time, including, you know, many other cues. But, you know, you could always, there's probably an event and your other event is when a user clicks, right? So when a user comes in and, 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 and wants to read, that's your event, right? And then at that event, you could basically just fetch a text or a number of texts to, to display. And you basically, you could cache or you could cache in the, in the server um, or you could be basically just, uh, yeah. So th th that part is yours, like how diverse you wanna, you wanna first maybe you wanna cover it a lot, but then for the same person, probably you wanna show as diverse and another person. So coverage of, for example, cause you want quality, right? So you want the, the you want to be able to, control the quality of uh, reading. That means people, for example, if you only show one thing to one person, you will, be, you will not be able to cross check with whether you know, these two are consistent or not. And of course, in a training, you have seen it already, if a number of people read the same text, it's hel it helps, right? Because then it's the kind of argumentation type. Some people read it slow, some people fast, uh, there is a network, lag and you know many other things so you will be able to build ultimately what you want to build is to enrich last time you had a 20 hours data to train for amharic for example you know the goal is if you could do it well you can and then you know if you advertise it and people can read then you can build something like a 3000 hours data then that way you will be able to, to take amharic or swahili or whatever language you're building from a resource poor to actually resource rich, right? So if you have a 3000 hour data um, for training, you really 
can make some big damage. I mean, that means very good. You can, you can start really competing um, with that. And there is no free open source data for Amharic or Swahili that has 3,000 hours of data. And even by the government standards that I know, for example, for Amharic, that they managed only 500 hours. But if you do it in this distributed way, and you could even think of different things, you know, of course, if we had time, one of the things you'd be, you could build some bots, you know, Telegram bots that does that, you know, and, and basically the Telegram bots, just like your front end, could actually subscribe from Kafka, right? So it's just basically, they basically consume, right? They because, and so you can have, you know, apps or um, sites that basically become, that you can use, all you need is just that, Somebody just sees a text and reads back. And it could be like, you know, a very uh, two, two line or three line sentence. And getting the text is much easier. Getting the audio is much, is very diff difficult. Especially audio on a same text multiple times is much harder by different people, you know, female, male, old, young, and all that. So this is about to build that kind of data collection. Okay, thanks. Okay. Again, now, you know, we're we are talking without even presenting the challenge document. I want people who, I want you to leave really being clear because, you know, that's the most important part. If anything from like very, very simple, silly, basic, what you consider question to anything sophisticated, just ask it now. And if you are living now, with our clarity, at least on terms of the jargon, in terms of what is being done in the week, then you're not doing just, you know, kind of good for yourself. Um, yeah, Titus gone, Michael. Uh, it is kind of, it's a producer means, it, it, it's both producer and, and it's, it's basically a manager. It's a message, um, message broker, let's call it. You know, it's like Kafka is basically, it, it, you, you, it, it, you can subscribe and publish to it. So that's basically it's called, in, in this model, it's called subscribe, publish and subscribe model. You know, like it's it's a way of like how message, in that case, asynchronously can you know publish, and then whoever is interested in that topic can read, but can subscribe and read. So this is and these are the very basically very efficient way of doing it. Okay, so that's that's Kafka. The rest are, yeah, Spark is basically um, there's no a Spark flow is basically some stream streamline but spark in general is basically a transformer basically a distributed computing uh, in itself and spark df is basically like pandas data frame but distributed and airflow you're right it's basically a scheduler okay it was... okay uh thank you for the opportunity are you able to hear me yeah <clears throat> okay from uh just uh just state what i have understood from what you've already talked about um, so basically you are supposed to have a front end that um, basically displays a text and uh, a user, maybe a person who is interested in a particular topic, uh, could just read the text and uh, provide uh, an audio version of it so, so that we could be able to um, enrich, our, we are taking an example for, for challenge where we'll, we'll get an enriched version of the data. So. Um, once the, the, the data, the, the, the person reads the particular the sentence from a particular topic, um, he, he, he reads it and the audio is fed, uh, is fed into the, it's connected to the Kafka. It's connected to the Kafka cluster. Is that right? So like once the audio, once the audio is read, um, it's fed into the, uh, the Kafka cluster and uh, later um, maybe transmitted uh, through to the, what is it called? Is that the jargon? Um, the spark. Is it the spark? I don't know. The one before you get to the yeah, letter. So that, that one is a transform. Yeah, to do some kind of transformation, quality checks, and and stuff. You you may do. You may 
it's you only use spark to do it in a distributed manner you could use just of course a normal python okay and what about the checks like uh, maybe the, the the integrity of the data i don't know uh, where are we supposed like where are you going to connect with that the, the, the checks maybe um to identify if it's the the, the, the text is maybe correct or resourceful. Is it on the Spark side yes, or maybe true? exactly, exactly. Yeah, at that part. So at the transformation part is where you do all the checks. Okay, so Kafka yeah. is simply just a means, a tunnel through, through to the Spark before reaching the data deck. Exactly. Kafka is really um, like, you know, if I'm sure just, the, uh, just if you look what it really is just from the, is a distributed event store and a stream processing platform, right? So it's basically really a way of, you, you, you are able to subscribe, publish to it, subscribe to it, and it manages that. So it's a, basically it manages very well at really high scale, um, these messages. Okay, so it's just it's just uh, the, the, it, it helps uh, when, when maybe um, multiple uh, users are, are publishing at a particular time. It's able exactly. to manage that before storing it into the yes, cluster. It is the most efficient way of doing that. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So yeah, uh, up to that, um, um, clear. So um, after the transfer, uh, uh, okay, after the transformation, what, yeah, so, what's so, the okay. essence of it? Okay. okay. Yeah, go on. Yeah what's the essence of uh, the airflow, airflow because once like already you've transformed so, the data think think of it who tells to do when who's the manager in every work there's a manager that monitors and controls tells everyone when to do when what right? I mean, basically maybe not what but when things happen you know how do they know to run now to run after one hour and maybe to run also some maybe on some other occasion so that is what's called like you, you need you need a scheduler you need to schedule it scheduler means like something that knows when when you have scheduled it it has a built-in strategy that it wakes up and does what was scheduled right so basically in this case calls spark to do something or go and act take data from here and, and put that. So you have a code that does something, right? That could be even a transformation. And it can be, of course, directly event driven. It can be event driven. It can be also um, something else. So in, it, this is really scheduling. That is basically, it's a, a way of um, call it, you know, in, a, in, a tr in any, even in a train, there is a timetable. Right, and and the timetable basically tells everyone to synchronize when and what to do, like basically when to do uh, what. Yeah. Oh. So oh. that that scheduler basically that that really synchronizer in time, uh, as well as in events, is is Airflow, and you oh. basically write what needs to be done at that scheduled instance using a bash script. For example, it could be you, right? You, you could have been doing it, let's say, every hour you, you go and you run something. Instead of that, you tell Airflow, say, like, every hour run this script. And that script can be a Python script, that script can be a bash script, that can be anything. And it does it does that. So, and it also, you know, it, it can do everything. It's basically it's a general um, synchronizer or scheduler. Oh, okay. okay, okay, okay. Yes, That's I think exactly also in the question, Meron, it's not when you when one when you see the word processing, don't only think of it as processing from like a very um, like the way that, for example, transformation perspective. Processing means like it takes data and for reading and writing and whatever uh, audio it has, of course, you know, you can you can send to it some audio you can send to it some uh, text some image blah blah so you know because it's a general message you know so it has kafka can really take read you know publish as well as you know um, send uh, receive or send uh, different type file types and what we mean by processing it that kind of processing uh, in that case but an actual processing to do for quality check whatever is called transformation so these are technical words, not the English word 
that you sometimes attribute to. So whenever, when you see some things like that, check what you, what really it means beyond the English of processing in this case, what, you know, what are the capabilities of this processing in Kafka is the difference from, it's the same also processing in, in Spark, but in that case, the processing is slightly different type of processing. We are saying like, you can run something, you can do some transformation. So, so these are different. So basically Kafka processes data, whatever data it can be audio image takes, doesn't, doesn't matter. It has many ways to deal with that. But it, by processing, it means it takes one thing and puts it somewhere else and, you know, somebody can read and write stuff like that, right? Um, and given, you know, why does it, it depends, it's because like, you know, to read audio is very different from to read the text because you, you need to, you know, basically, um, ultimately the computers understand only zeros and ones and unless they, they understand the format, they may corrupt it, right? So. Uh, for that reason, of course, Kafka needs to to have image processor or audio processor or something so that it can understand audio files or um, uh, image files or text files in that sense. But it's that processing is much more really to handle, uh, to take something from here and, and to put it there. While Spark is basically, you're basically doing you're writing a code to do many things you want, including sanity check, including, you know, things like that, right? Hopefully that's clear. DDI also um, replied that, so that's correct. Okay. Okay, just, uh, just, one, okay. Okay. just one last question. Um, concerning the data, because uh, we are supposed to maybe display a particular topic to a user, are we like supposed to store the data, for instance, the an example, the two hour, the the two hour uh, Amharic uh, Swahili data, the one that we use for it for, are we like supposed to store it in the AWS bucket such that um, maybe it can be extracted to the front end and, uh, and maybe the, the users can um, maybe, uh, I don't know, read, read the, like how it's supposed to integrate it with the, with the backend, do it like already how we need to have data already stored somewhere such that yeah. it's in the front uh, so that it can be extracted then maybe pushed back to the same uh, source. Yeah, it's basically that's what we're saying, right? So that's a project. You basically have a text, not in this case audio. Of course, for quality control, you may use some of the the parts that that you used in week four as a way of quality checks. Like you know, once in a while, you have the audio as well, and so you could actually just show some of the text that you have the audio for, and then you can check if the quality is the same. But normally what you have is that you have a corpse, a text corpse that you can get from many places. Um, oh. And basically, and that's why, I, you know, some of the links uh, help you there. And then you basically are showing that it can be books, it can be anything that's readable and you chunk them, you prepare them to be, you know, one sentence or two sentence line, and then you ask people to read. And then you get back that one and you're building a corpse yourself, training samples. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. Dinian, you were... Okay, uh, my question is a bit more basic. Uh, basically, uh, since we're building a pipeline, I understand that on the front of the pipeline, basically, there will be an interface, some kind of web application, or uh, as you just said, uh, it could be uh, a Telegram bot or something that uh, accepts data from users like uh, it could be an audio file and uh, uh, others then this data will be sent to and uh, the, finally it will be stored uh, somewhere uh, on the cloud maybe in s3 bucket so the middle part is going to be basically uh, ingesting this data pro <coughs> and structuring it in a, a form that is suitable to be stored and uh, making it accessible for uh, the data science team, I think. So basically, well, my question is, uh, the, the in the middle part of the pipeline, uh, what where will the data first go when we, for example, I'm, let's say I'm a subscriber and I sent uh, uh, an audio transcription for some kind of sentence, and yeah, then that's, that's some that, kind of sentence. Just understand that that's some kind of sentence. You bring it from Kafka itself. 
or oh, okay, first stuff. it needs to be loaded from the Kafka. Yeah, right. Basically, someone comes and says, like, okay, you know, show me. Like when they log in or you know when they open your, you know, when they interact with your front end, you're basically pulling something. You are pulling okay. it from let's say server. That server can be just a Kafka stream as well. And then you're basically someone does something, you know, whatever is allowed in, in the front end. And then the front end package that one, basically the audio that was recorded, plus the text that was read, and some metadata that you, you define, and then it sends back. And when it sends back, it actually directly goes and publishes basically, uh, publishes it into Kafka again, as a one topic. The topic could be just the text um, and some kind of hash, whatever, you know, time hash. And then that one is then processed by back because the topic is basically one topic, let's imagine. So that topic, there are others that would consume from that topic. And in the background, in that kind of, how often do you process that can be scheduled to Airflow? So let's say every hour, basically you, you go and read from Kafka, whatever was replied from the front end, you use uh, Spark to process it or any Python it could be in this case. Or you could, in, every time there's an event, you could trigger, like, you know, Spark could be connected to Kafka to listen to Kafka actually, to some Kafka topics. And then when there is an event there, it can also process it, so like that. So it's your choice of design. But that's, and then after that, it puts it basically into all, into, into, into a storage. That storage is a bucket, that's what's called data lake. If it was a data warehouse, you know, a data, you know, some kind of database, then you could put it in a database. Nice. Okay. So the, the first our first destination is uh, Kafka, as you just said. And yeah. there is uh, uh, the I think the Spark flow on the Airflow will be listening uh, on uh, like events that are happening in the Kafka and uh, triggering different actions. Uh, if I understand yeah. correctly. Then the Spark flow is basically a way of processing the data. Uh, yeah, it's basically uh, yeah. in a distributed manner, I think, right? Yeah, so exactly. We, what we, does we, that we want Spark it's... so that you can do it in distributed manner. In particular, I think this is a good time to mention also why, why do we want all these tools? Because we want to build something that you can get 3,000 hours of data what does it mean 3000 hours of data why didn't people build it already it needs probably you need probably let's imagine if you are allowing people multiple people let's imagine per person you might get um, a one minute let's imagine even make it five minutes that's not usually the case two minutes data from one person okay from one interaction so now you, that means one hour is basically is 30 people, right? 30 interactions. Now you need 3,000 hours. So that means three ta you know, 30 times 3,000. So that basically is you, you, you want around 1 million interactions. And that is why you need to really handle. And, and of course, um, if the, the kind of the text is so repetitive, then the training is not that good. So 3000 hours of like, unique data, like, you know, that you want. Now for each of them, it would be great, of course, if you can have like 12, you know, 10 or 20 or 100 people reading it. So that basically takes you something like 100 million events you need. So now to handle 100 million events in a short amount of time, let's imagine an immense time, you know, what, how much does it require per day? You would basically need, um, let's imagine 100 million events, right? So you need to process in a, you know, for three months, you basically 1 million events you have to process in a day. So that's basically why you need something like this, bigger systems that can handle really lots and lots of kind of, um, you know, uh, interactions without loss and stable. That's why you need all of these bigger systems, not just, 
you know, what you would run, uh, what you would write just with simple systems, you know, what you would build yourself. Does that, does that make sense? It's like the size is that we want to process in three months, 100 million events. Yes, that actually makes a lot of sense. So basically Sparkflow is a way of uh, running yeah. some kind of script uh, in a distributed manner. That means uh, it's running it uh, on a different exactly. instances, I think, uh, exactly. to make sure uh, there will not be any clashes in the two. It doesn't uh, exactly. it, I know, maybe increase the speed of processing. Exactly. Because Kafka is, is right? probably, exactly. Kafka is probably, you know, if you are processing 1 million events, um, then Kafka is probably in an hour, it's basically giving you some tens of hundreds of thousands, um, or maybe in tens of thousands events per, per hour. And you need to really, depending on your processing capacity, you might really need, and, and also the timing is different, right? Sometimes you may have a lot in one time, let's say at midnight, you might not have a lot, but midday, you might really have a lot. So it, it, you need to handle some kind of burst capacity as well. So normally the easiest way to do it is just by distribution, right? So you, know, you, you, you just don't run on one computer, but you run it just on a distributed manner. So when you are thinking of productionalizing something, this is how you do. So it's not, it's, if you are, if you are really thinking to produce, you know, to kind of put this thing into use and to be able to, in the next six months, for example, for uh, Swahili and Amharic, you want to build something and, and not only you don't stop there as well. So you might really actually use some other languages as well. You, if you want that kind of system that can handle such a large scale mobilization, that's how you do. It. And that's, you know, the issue, how you should do it. So what you're building is something that potentially you could become a game changer, right? Okay, uh, I'm sorry if I'm taking too much time, but I'm yeah. just trying to really put it on the ground. So yeah. uh, just uh, to make connection to the, uh, the example I just uh, mentioned earlier, and, uh, we're accepting some audio file, and let's just say that no, you don't. You accept not audio file. You accept just uh, text, because that's what you know. Texts are available. Audios are not available. What is really not available is a text and audio together. You may have a lot of audio from, let's say, YouTube and stuff, radios, but you may not have the transcription of them. So you have a lot of text, but you don't have audio for them. What you want for training is at both at the same time. That means a transcription of something. It could be an audio and it's text or a text and it's audio. What you're building right now, what you is more available and easy to do is you have lots of text you want people to read. That's easier to ask than to ask people to write back. Let's say, or if you ask people, oh, hear this, like, you know, well, this segment, this audio, and please write uh, the text. It's so hard that one, right? Because people may not have Amharic keyboard to write. So that one is very hard. But to show them and to ask them for to read it is much easier. So that's why it's you're probably gonna be building it with text. First, you, you get text, you ask them to read. Okay, I see. Uh, so uh, we're accepting some kind of package of an audio in its transcription and then will be- Not an audio, again. Yeah, I, text, I, I, I'm yeah, just saying that it's text. transcription. Yeah. yeah, either a transcription or from anywhere, like from a book or something, and then you ask them to read it, and you you then basically they record it, and then you send back an audio and the the text that was read. Okay, then this will be directly sent to the Kafka, I think, yeah, where uh, it will generate an event. I think when it reaches send, uh, that event will be listened to by Airflow, which is a scheduler that listens no, no, to all. Uh, no, no, no. Like it could be, but it's really like it, it. It's not an event. You can subscribe to a topic. So that's a difference. About it's not just a simple event. You can subscribe, um, and then that means you can at any time uh, on that topic, you can subscribe and and process whatever available. So it's not just only event based. It can be time based. So Kafka really doesn't matter which way you do it. 
So at every hour, you can just go in that topic and see how much, how much is published there. Get all of it, process it, and send it back. That can be time-based. Okay, so uh, the part I'm not uh, entirely getting is um, where, uh, how is uh, Kafka in the the uh, the, uh, the Spark flow connected? I understand exactly. how the air, the Spark you, you flow. Connect, you can connect them yourself using exactly Airflow. So Airflow calls uh, Spark to do the processing. Exactly. Yeah. Or Air Spark can directly consume. Okay, Spark. Okay, it can be a, a subscriber to Kafka directly. Spark. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the right word. Can yeah, it be directly? It's, it's actually, connected? it's really subscribe. It's basically consume. Yeah, it can be a consumer. Okay. Okay. Now yeah. that makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. So, okay, time is up. I have another call now, but hopefully, if you haven't asked it so far, and if you really are lost, and I think I would say really blame yourself, but hopefully. There are a lot of people who understand it, so you can ask them. But don't really pass the next three hours without understanding what the project is, and the different. And if there are questions, of course, like we can, like let's just go on on Slack and ask them. Just ask as many questions as you can. What you want to ask here, and you didn't have a chance, please ask them. Even if the reply comes a bit late, please just ask them right now. Whatever, just in your mind, silly, not silly. There is no silly question. As the more you ask, the better it is. So. Please just ask, 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 ask them whatever is in your head so that by the, you know, in the next couple of hours, you will be able to then plan and design how you do it. Of course, you then have to read what is Kafka, blah, blah, blah. But, and we will also offer again this time AWS. So I will con communicate there in Slack. So you will be working on AWS machine. Okay. Cheers, guys. Bye. Sorry that some of you have raised hands, but I, I just I have another call, so I have to go. Cheers, bye. Uh, whoever is recording, you can stop it. Cheers. Bye.